line in the chart divides life into two parts. The first six houses under the horizon stand for personal and private concerns. In these houses, we're born and raised, and we learn to take care of ourselves. The upper half of the chart stands for public concerns and the outer world. The very first issue we encounter in public life is partnerships. In the seventh are working partnerships, business partnerships, love partnerships, and marriage. It's also the house of open enemies. This is the first house in the chart that brings an opportunity to not just look at a house, but also bring in its opposite. And that's important because you can learn a lot about the meaning of a house that way. The houses in the wheel are like the yin yang symbol. There's a little of one in the other. Let's start with the seventh house cusp. It's one of the angles of the chart and it's called the descendant. It's directly opposite the ascendant on the eastern horizon. These two lines have a relationship. The ascendant is the way you go about interacting with the world. There's a story that surrounds the ascendant. This is the way you begin everything. It's the type of person you want to be as you approach life. The ascendant says, I am these things. And then there are those things that you're inclined to disown about yourself. You say, these things aren't me. Those traits for a multitude of reasons get shuffled over to the descendant and we feel distant from them. In that space between who you are and who you aren't, attractions are born. The seventh is Libra's house in the natural zodiac. And in that zone, our attractions are overseen by Venus, goddess of love. One of the most interesting things about Venus is that she's shown in ancient art holding a mirror. The glyph for Venus is said to be her hand mirror. A superficial reading of that is that Venus is vain, but she's not. She's self-possessed, self-assured. She doesn't have to keep reminding herself she's beautiful. She never forgets. What that mirror means is that love is a mirror. Nothing says as much about a person as their choice in a partner. It's impossible to admire something in another person without admiring it in yourself too. And it's impossible to hate something in another person without hating it within yourself as well. Love your neighbor as yourself isn't spiritual advice, it's a fact. You only love your neighbor as much as you love yourself. And you're only as good to others as you are to yourself. And if it looks like there's a differential, someone's acting. It should be noted that the seventh house is focused primarily on romantic partnerships, but the seventh is actually broader than that. It describes the way you encounter others generally. But love relationships suck the air out of that side of the chart because they're of high interest. Now, the descendant stands for the types of people we like to have partnerships with. It's why some details may be different from relationship to relationship, but we don't pick wildly different partners. We have a type, there's a pattern. With Gemini or Mercury on the descendant, you're probably drawn to intelligence. If Uranus is there, your partners love their freedom. If Saturn's in the seventh, the partners are steady. 
maybe even boring, and always somehow rejecting, and you always end up feeling so lonely. We tend to have the same outcomes over and over again because the descendant is at work. This is a juicy part of the chart that works in the same way the ascendant works, which is through a process of selection. The ascendant doesn't stand for what surrounds us, but what we pay attention to out of all that surrounds us. The descendant is the same way. It shows what we select from a sea of potential suitors. And over time, it's easy to believe that what we select, what we see, is the way it is. And then people say, well, you know how men are. You know how women are. And people will finish those sentences in very different ways based on their seventh house cusp and the planets nearby. The descendant and those planets can rise in vibration and consciousness as you evolve, but they never lose their basic personality. If you're married, your spouse will be found in the seventh house. This segment of the chart is associated with the marriage contract. The scales are the scales of justice. And so this slice of the wheel is linked to legal contracts and legal partnerships. But any substantial partnership will be here. Let's go a little deeper into the idea that this is the house of open enemies. What this is referring to is something that a lot of us have experienced. Love starts out great, but then things happen. There are disappointments, and it isn't going to work out. It's difficult for an ex to be a hidden enemy. They're right out there in the open. Two people who have been married have a lot of inside information as to how to hurt each other. And I've heard more than one person refer to an ex as a nemesis. Even if you aren't talking about an ex here, all enemies are a powerful and sometimes transformative partnership. Your enemies are a hotbed of potential for a great deal of learning. They'll show you yourself, especially the depths of your dysfunction more than a friend ever could. And here's also where you see the yin-yang of the houses. The house of Libra is the house of love and peace and the delicate scales seeking perfect harmony. But within all that is the dot of Aries, a little bit of war. A mirror is one thing, but the scales speak to something else about love. A scale is like a mobile. You touch one side of it and you affect the other side. In partnerships, the pans never operate independently. One always affects the other, and the optimal relationship is one that brings a Libran refinement to both individuals. In short, the ascendant is all the things about yourself that you're comfortable with people seeing. The descendant is the stuff you're not comfortable showing to the world. Marriages are public relationships, but the details are often best kept private. Sometimes I'm asked if a friendship can fall into the seven. Yes, if there's also a partnership, and if that partnership can stand alone and function even upon subtracting the friendship. The suffragists, Susan B. Anthony and Elizabeth Stanton, had a friendship for the ages. But even above that, they had a partnership. 
Sometimes they were literally partners in crime because they were thrown in jail for trying to vote. If I had to choose, I would say that they were partners above being friends because when they stopped working together, they wrote letters but never actually visited again. And sometimes a person can move from the seventh into the 11th house of friendships. If you aren't sure where a partner friend belongs or what role they really play in your life, watch the transits to those houses, they'll tell you. Thank you for watching Secrets from an Astrologer's Desk, the seventh house. Stay tuned for all the ways you can get in touch for a birth chart reading and full astrological services. I'm Joy, the eighth house is next.